This video is going to cover the section on the brain. This is kind of a shorter section. It is towards the end of the semester. And for right now, we're going to cover what we're covering. And obviously the brain could be an entire semester. I'm going to try to keep this video short. These videos work best if they're shorter. It doesn't do good to make an hour long or 45 minute. And I've made a couple of these that are over 30 minutes. So this one I will hit the highlights, but I think it's good. There are things I need to point out, and I hope these are helping you. But um, this one's written verbatim. Okay, so the brain. Big, uh, obviously, important organ. <laughs> uh, it is divided down the middle, and here's the right and left, what are called hemispheres. Now, the top part that's folded up here, all of this, and I know I have some writing, that's all the cerebrum. This down here is called the cerebellum. And I'll look through and see if I can't post another picture, a little bit better cross-section picture of the brain. So there are two large masses, the cerebral hemispheres, like I was saying. Now, a gyrus is considered to be one of these folds on the top, and a sulcus, or sulci, are the little grooves. So see this red comes up like that, that's a gyrus, and the area there, which I guess the sulcus actually makes the gy gyri. Um, sulcus are grooves, gyri are considered to be like a fold or a ridge or something. But yeah, there's actually a condition called lysencephaly where a person's born with their brain smooth, uh, don't live very long, I mean, I believe a day or two. They have no higher brain function, so the folds help. Uh, the fissures are deeper, and like I was showing you here, this is actually called the longitudinal fissure. It separates, the brain's not cut in half, but it's got a really deep groove down the middle. Okay, so let's go through really quickly on the lobes, uh, frontal lobe, and then we'll just touch on those. They correspond to the bones we covered, so here's the sulcus, here's the gyrus, we did that. Um, okay, some more landmarks. So here's the frontal lobe. Look, you can see how big it is. All that color. This is the parietal lobe. This is the occipital lobe. And this is called the temporal lobe. There's actually a fifth lobe in the brain. It's on the inside. I don't think we even, we don't, we don't have it. I'm not going to worry about it. It's called the in, insula, I believe. So the frontal lobe, major function for the frontal lobe. And that's why that's a different color. See how this is orange and see that little red section? That's the motor area. So all of the, and I'm going to point this out, the, the frontal lobe controls all voluntary skeletal muscle movements. They originate from that red area and then go down the spinal cord out along peripheral nerves. So if you want to move your right hand, it's originating up here, that thought is. All function, oh, excuse me, all um, lobes of the brain have what is called an accessory function. Um, and okay, let me point this out too. That's Broca's area, which allows a person to speak. It allows their tongue and the muscles to coordinate to formulate a word and speech. That's Broca's area. The association association areas are things like problem solving, awareness, consequences of behavior. You know, some people believe like teenagers, their frontal lobe is not fully developed. That's why some teenagers, and I'm speaking of myself here, uh, can act like an idiot at times and um, you know when they're growing up and uh, anyway that's uh, that part of their brain uh, problem solving and like I said it's your, it's your muscle movements and I haven't mentioned this yet but if you're ever taking a course and nothing is sticking and I'm saying this is the end of our course here but if you write things down it's been shown that help with memory because this part of your brain is what you're using to take a test study uh, you're, you're building knowledge, and if you write things down, it really does connect that part of your brain to what you're studying. The parietal lobe, which is the middle section, and you see here it's also, it's, it's actually the major sensory area. In the last section, we touched on what are called the spinal thalamic tracts. They end up in this area. So see this part here? Now this green is the parietal lobe, and, and including this yellow. That's the sensory area. That's also part of the parietal lobe. So temperature, t pressure, touch, and pain involving the skin. That's where those sensations end up there. 
Um, association area is understanding speech and choosing words to express thoughts and feelings. So if you're carrying on a conversation, it's thought that part of your brain is participating in that. The temporal lobe, which is the side, and I uh, apologize for bouncing back and forth. Of course, it's hearing, uh, the ability to understand speech and to read. Maybe this would be better this way. You can see the temporal there. So we got lobes, there's the temporal lobe, frontal lobe, there's Broca's area, parietal lobe, and then uh, there, oops, I didn't mean to skip it. There's the temporal lobe, ability to understand speech and to read. The occipital lobe is really cool. If I didn't want to make this video shorter, I might just post this under your link. There's a scene from a movie you can watch. The occipital lobe is responsible for vision. When you see something, it's actually upside down. And the occipital lobe actually turns the image around correctly because when light goes through the eyes and it goes through the lens, it refracts. And when light goes through glass or water, it bends. So the occipital lobe keeps you from seeing everything uh, like you're not in the matrix, okay? So not so everything's not upside down. Uh, visual patterns, combining visual images, how you recognize people. That's the back part of this brain. So the fact that you know your friends, your kids, everybody, that has to do with that part of your brain. Hemisphere dominance, 90% of the population is said to be left hemisphere dominant. So most people write right-handed. So let's see, these are the hemispheres. Here's the right side and the left side. See, I'm a right-handed person, so I'm left hemisphere dominant. So I'm like 90%. If, you're, if you write left-handed, then you are right hemisphere dominant, which apparently, according to them, is 10% of the population. Basal nuclei. Now, I know this is on our list. Here is a deep picture of the brain. Uh, it's covered. This is the area that Parkinson's disease affects. Uh, it produces dopamine. And this is called the cerebral cortex. See the gray? That's the unmyelinated part. And the white are the myelinated tracts. Okay, they have myelin sheaths. So your thoughts originate up here and they have to travel down through here. And the basal nuclei help control the skeletal muscle movements. And that's why a person with Parkinson's disease, that's why they shake so much because that area is not producing dopamine anymore. A um, little bit about brain anatomy. I just showed you the cerebral cortex. I'm going to go just through. This is all written verbatim. So here's the longitudinal fissure. Separates the brain into right and left hemispheres. Here is the transverse fissure. Uh, this is an area called the lateral sulcus, which is a landmark. So here's a temporal lobe. There's actually a deep groove right there. It's a little deeper than a normal sulcus. There's also one here. Uh, excuse me, you know, like right there, it's called the central sulcus. It was on the other picture. See, there it is. I'm sorry, it's between the, um, so here's the motor area of the frontal lobe, and then that's not colored in this picture. It's the sensory area. There's actually a deeper groove there as well. Uh, now, this is, um, and what I'll do, this, this particular book has a really good picture of the brain. I think I will post that for you under your diagrams. But these are fibers that connect all areas of the brain. So the brain has to communicate with, it, with itself. And um, it says here these are myelinated. There are three fiber types within the brain. Uh, commensural fibers, projection fibers, and association fibers. Um, commensural fibers connect the left and right hemisphere. And so... This area going across, it's actually called the corpus callosum. See this part right there? And sorry about the small writing. That's those tracks that are going across this way. So they connect the left and right hemispheres. These are called projection fibers. They're coming up this way. Remember we talked about how nerve tracks cross over? That, those are the ones we're talking about. And these are also the ones that have to be disconnected when a person sleeps. There's a hormone called melatonin that basically kind of disconnects all this so a person can actually sleep at night. So projection fibers connect the upper and lower parts of the brain. And then there's also fibers that are called association fibers. And they're on each side. The red here, see the, on each, they connect the front part of the brain to the back. And then those are the projection ones coming up that way. 
So a little brain anatomy. Oop. Uh, yeah, go back. Here we go. Okay, the diencephalon. So we'll go through this and say, I'm going to try to keep this short. Um, it's all verbatim. You see all these structures? The diencephalon is sort of this middle area. See, it's just kind of this vague area in here. Now, I'll try to point out as many things as I can. So here's the midbrain. Now, um, I, I believe, now we cover the uh, the stalk and everything, but so the thalamus, hypothalamus, optic tracts, optic chiasma or chiasma, infundibulum, that's the part that connects the pituitary gland and the pineal gland. Yes, and you need a, you guys need a better brain picture than this one, but um, so here's the corpus callosum, here's the fornix. This area in the middle is called the thalamus. This area below that is the hypothalamus. This is the infundibulum. This is the pituitary gland. It's sitting in the cella tersica. Uh, on the back here is where you find the pineal gland, and I'll, I'll try to locate a better picture for that. The pineal gland is something that puts you to sleep at night. It, um, and this is the corpora right there. These two bumps, the corpora quadrigemina, the pons, the medulla, uh, the cerebellum pointed out there's the arbor vitae, but um, those are all parts of the diencephalon. Uh, the pineal gland is secretes melatonin, and it actually puts uh, a person to sleep. And I see if I can get a better picture later. So thalamus, uh, maybe I have one here. I thought I no, I don't. It's in your PowerPoint. Thalamus is the major sensory area of the brain. The thal spinal thalamic tracts go through there. The thalamus directs it to the appropriate part of the brain. The hypothalamus, and I think I have it on here blown. I do. Good. Um, so here's the corpus callosum. Like I was saying, here's the thalamus, this area below that, and this is this is that part of the brain that's blown up. Um, in fact, there's the pineal gland. That little fold right there above the corpora quadrigemini is the pineal gland. So the hypothalamus, you can see what it does. Um, heart rate, blood pressure, body temperature, it produces tons of hormones. Hunger, uh, people, some people believe that the hypothalamus has the set point for hunger. Uh, some people are hungrier than others. <laughs> uh, it's like fever uh, or body temperature. And it does all kinds of sleep and wakefulness, production of tons of hormones. It says secretion of the stomach. So it controls a lot of different things. Uh, the brain stem is the midbrain pons medulla oblongata. Now that actually is a decent picture. It shows it right there. Midbrain has three things to it. It's that portion of the brain. This is maybe a little better. So um, this area here is the midbrain. The pons comes out like this, and then here's the medulla oblongata. And the midbrain has this little area. This is called the cerebral aqueduct. This is the corpora quadrigemina. And there are nerve tracts that come up this way. They're called the cerebral peduncles. They're part of the cortical spinal tracts we talked about in the previous section. Um, they control skeletal muscle movements. They go through that area right there. The cere cerebral aqueduct connects the third and fourth ventricles. The corpora quadrigemina is fascinating. Um, two pairs of knobs, the superior colliculus and inferior colliculus because there's two on each side so it's colliculi it's plural and i will post a video of sheldon i'd like you to watch it talking about this but see these bumps the upper is the superior colliculus the lower is the inferior if you're dissecting something and you pull down the cerebellum it looks like a baby's butt from behind so it's actually called the baby's butt the corpora quadrigemina but it's a fascinating part of the brain. It's your visual and auditory reflexes. In other words, when somebody, if you're walking down a hallway and someone says your name and you could turn around and you know the direction that the sound's coming from, you know they said your name and you can localize on it. That's that part of the brain. If you didn't have that part of your brain, you would not be able to locate sound and you wouldn't be able your eyes would not connect to a sound that you hear 
the pons this is the rounded bulge on the underside of the brain the pons is that little area there once again i'll post a much better brain picture for you so here's the pons it has tracks going this direction and it has tracks going up and down and yes what are called the cerebral peduncles which are the cortical spinal tracts that are found in that area as well the medulla oblongata controls heart rate this is the blood pressure constriction and dilation of blood vessels vasoconstriction is getting smaller vasodilating is increasing the diameter of the lumen more blood flow that's blood pressure and this is breathing the rate the rhythm and the depth of breathing if you want to know where that is in your on your head it's right behind your ear find the portion of your right right where your earlobe is right you can put your finger right there that's where the uh, medulla is so it's right there the medulla oblongata uh, once again I think I'll post the water boy video if you want to watch that you'll never forget where it is I promise and then past that now uh, I don't have you for a lab but there's a big opening in the skull called the foramen magnum and that's where the spinal cord goes into the skull and so past the medulla would be the spinal cord and it's exiting that's what that down here is called the foramen magnum so like I said that is verbatim written for you nothing really to add there the cerebellum is an area for equilibrium and coordination uh, it's this area in the back it's part of the hind brain believe it or not the pons medulla and cerebellum is the hind brain that little white area is called the arbor vitae it's the myelinated tracks it's called the tree of life but to summarize the cerebellum coordination of muscle movements and equilibrium so it says it maintains posture receives sensory impulses from muscles and tendons any injury to the cerebellum results in tremors and accurate movements or voluntary muscles people who have orthostatic intolerance where they stand up and they faint that has to do with the cerebellum as well blood flow issues so the last thing ventricles and cerebral spinal fluid the brain produces spinal fluid that flows up and down the spinal cord and around the brain and these are actually some pretty good pictures um, there's the cerebellum so what this is supposed to show um, and there's four ventricles see this big one on here now I'm gonna say this this person's facing me so this is the left side this is the right side this is sometimes called one and two this is the lateral ventricle on the left this is the lateral ventricle on the right in the middle there where the thalamus is located is called the third ventricle and then down here at the bottom is the fourth ventricle and then it goes down from there here's the side view see here are the lateral ventricles like it says there the third is where the thalamus is located and then there's the fourth down there Oop, well one two okay so right sides two that's not really important uh, right sides one left sides two I think I said the other one but um, don't really have to know these order the the third and the fourth are good to know so the lateral ventricles produce spinal fluid it then flows down through these little openings down to the third ventricle which then flows down to the fourth which then goes one of three directions um, remember the ependymal cells in the last section they control the concentration of spinal fluid and this is the corpus callosum this is the fornix and what we're what this is showing these little capillaries with the arrows these are called choroid plexus they form spinal fluid the ependymal cells control what's in that the concentration but the two lateral ventricles produce most of the spinal fluid and then flows down see this will be the third and it's going down this way to what's called the cerebral aqueduct or the aqueduct of sylvius which is down to the four so here's the entire diagram so here's the cerebrum you have a layer of water basically that separates the cerebrum from the skull and it acts as a shock absorber it does also help stabilize blood with ions but most of it's produced up here in the lateral ventricles it's flowing through here the third here's the fourth and you see the arrows coming down fluid can either go through the central canal or it goes down the spinal cord oh my goodness zombies I have a 
I have a better picture than this. But it goes down through the spinal cord, and then it also goes through the meninges, the subarachnoid space around the brain. So, lateral ventricles, third ventricle, fourth ventricle, the cerebral aqueduct connects the third and the fourth. If I go back, uh, it's um, well, it's right there. It's it's part of the midbrain. Remember we talked. It's right. It's right in that area. Uh, choroid plexus are little capillaries that produce spinal fluid. The ependymal cells control what's in it. And then as it flows down from the lateral ventricles, so it goes from one and two to the third, through the cerebral aqueduct to the fourth, and then it either flows, well, it flows through all three. It goes through the meninges of the spinal cord, around those, the meninges, meninges of the brain, meninges meaning the subarachnoid space, remember between the pia mater and the arachnoid mater, okay, we did that in the spinal cord. The dura is on the other side of the arachnoid mater. And the central canal. And that is it. So I hope these videos help. I know that one. I'm trying to keep this one short. But that is all the parts of the brain that we are going to cover. So thanks for joining me.